प्रिय भाई और बहनों नमो बुधाई जय भीम फॉर माय इंडियन ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स सो आई थिंक आई एम गोइंग टू बी वेरी अनक्लियर टुडे बिकॉज़ आई हैव समथिंग टू से दैट इट्स नॉट वेरी इजी टू से आई एम श्योर दैट मेनी ऑफ यू आर फाइंडिंग लुकिंग एट और लिसनिंग टू और वाचिंग द न्यूज़ pretty horrifying at the moment I mean, it's always pretty dreadful isn't it uh, but uh, it seems to have uh, reached a a pitch of horror that i've only known in my life during the cuban missile crisis and i was very small then it seems as if the world is in an absolutely dreadful state of course it always is uh, but uh, it's much more evident and much more dangerous than it's ever been before so far as i can see and uh, probably like many of you one is irresistibly drawn to find out what the latest is against one's own better inclinations at the same time as as finding it uh, really uh, a, a body blow each time each time you look at the news it uh, sinks your heart yet further and uh, it really is difficult to see where the world is going to go how it's going to get out of this present predicament strung between an increasingly degenerate liberal democracy on the one hand and a uh, increasingly uh, powerful uh, nationalist populist authoritarianism that seems to be the battle lines and uh, one cannot really feel this a great deal of hope uh, frankly so why do we keep going why do i keep going why have i bothered to come here today uh, uh why am i speaking to you and uh, why do i feel it's actually quite important to try say try to say something to you even though i know that uh, i'm inadequate to what needs to be said we're all inadequate to what needs to be said but of course one has to go immediately to shanti deva the power of evil is very great uh, by what power can it be uh, uh, i can't remember the exact words but can it be controverted uh, by opposed overcome than by bodhicitta so uh, that is what keeps us going keeps me going in the end however low one gets of course one has the normal expedience of ignoring that is literally turning away uh but it comes back the state of things not just the geopolitical situation but the uh, the situation in the west in general the, the de- degeneracy the increasing emphasis on personal whim uh and uh, that is opposed only by coercive power as it were those seem to be the t- the two alternatives a, a a a culture that is broadly based on whim and cultures that are based on authoritarian uh, um the drive as it were coercion um so what one has to then reach deeper reach higher whatever you like to whichever metaphor you prefer uh, and one has to find within oneself what is within the universe which is a power that is greater than all of that that goes on despite it all that is available to us despite it all the buddha gained enlightenment 2500 years ago and in a certain sense his enlightenment is still going on it's still present to us that's what bodhicitta means if you just take the word literally i know this is not the way it's generally understood in uh mahayana exegesis but it literally means enlightened uh mind enlightened awareness so what 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 i understand by that is again this is my own interpretation my own understanding is that with the buddha's enlightenment something entered the world that was not merely personal wasn't just an event in the life of one person which is then handed on from one person to one person down the ages a rent was made in the the split in reality till then 
reality had been divided, as it were, uh, between uh, the world, as it were, the worldly, samsara, and uh, the, 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 the transcendental dimension, uh, um, in the, the realm of enlightenment, the realm of reality, the realm of ultimate reality. But the Buddha broke through for the first time, according to Buddhist tradition, first time at least in this uh, uh, cosmic era, someone broke through and encountered reality, the way things truly are. And that wasn't, as I say, a merely personal event. It's made that rent in the division in reality was permanent. It's still there. Because the Buddha opened the doors of the deathless, it becomes easier for those thereafter to walk through. It's not just a door in the, in, in, in the a rent in the, in the veil, as it were, but it's a power that begins to act uh, from reality through into samsara, using these vast shorthands. And uh, that is an effective power that can reach to us. I, I've been reflecting a lot on my own involvement with the Dhamma and remembering my own first encounter with uh, the Buddha. Very young age, actually. I, I, my father uh, was on a ship that um, went to the Far East and he came back with a sort of annual, uh, or, you know, what a, a, a kind of uh, a book that had been made by the crew about the trip. And in that, there was a picture of a Buddhist shrine that the ship had gone to uh, um, uh, Thailand, I think. Um, actually, no, it was Myanmar, Burma at that time. And uh, so there's a picture of a Burmese shrine. And I remember the impact that that had on me. Uh, it, it, it stayed with me. I can see it right now. Later, when I actually heard about the Buddha, it wasn't just that I was listening to something of a story about the past. I felt an encounter with, uh, with the Buddha. Uh, if the Buddha entered my life, and he's been a permanent presence in my life since then. Because that is the nature of the rent that he made. Something has come into reality that is more accessible than it was before. Far more accessible. Not only accessible, but active. Uh, even though the Buddha lived 2,500 years ago, that force is still active in the world. But of course... It's not so easy to access it, even though it's there and uh, people do connect with it. It's not so easy even to connect and far less is it easy to uh, sort of bring it into play within one's life. And, uh, but it's this force that the Buddha opened us up to, opened uh, our world to, that is what can controvert, that what can oppose this dreadful evil that there is around us, the evil of rampant ego, the rampant self-interest that drives the world. It's only that power that can overcome it, something that comes from beyond uh, in, in, uh, an isolated individuality. And of course, we live in a time, especially in, in Britain and other such countries, of... Uh, highly inflated individualism, supercharged individualism, where whim is king. And uh, it's only this, this, this power that the Buddha opened us up to by his own enlightenment that we can overcome that, that we can continue to fight against it. Who knows whether we'll succeed in, a, in an ordinary worldly sense, uh, but that doesn't sort of matter. Again, I've often quoted Bante saying that he didn't mind if the order uh, collapsed. What did he mean? He didn't mean, I don't care about the order, it's, it's, a, it's, a, <laughs> it's a failure. What he meant was there's something bigger uh, than the order that the order represents. And what is bigger than the order that the order represents is that very force 
that I'm talking about the Buddha as having opened up for us. So, uh, of course, this brings us then topically to the order. What is the order? Uh, well, it is uh, the, uh, the manifestation of that transcendent force that the Buddha opened us up to for us in this time, in this age, in this place. That's what the order is. It's the manifestation of that, well, what Bhante called suprapersonal force. Bhante says, doesn't he, that he didn't found the order. He, he, he said that he found it almost impossible when he thought about uh, the, the, the order as it is now, the movement as it is now, found it impossible to think that he had created it. And in fact, he didn't feel that he did. He felt it was... Uh, formed, created through him, not by him. So what was it that formed it? Well, it was that, uh, that stream of spiritual energy uh, that uh, the Buddha opened the world up to. It was bodhicitta, if you want to call it that. There's a, a, a very powerful quotation from that really important uh, talk of Bhante's given on... Uh, um, Padmasambhava Day in 1979 at the LBC. I, I think that that talk needs recurring to again and again and again. I think it's one of the most important talks Bhante's ever given with the, the strongest spiritual uh, impetus that you, you, you generally get from him and you get some pretty powerful stuff. But he says somewhere that uh, our centres, our communities and our co-ops, remember co-ops, uh, are all ways of contacting different aspects of life and transforming them. Because this is essentially what our movement is about. It's not simply a Buddhist movement in the narrow sense, or even a spiritual movement in the narrow sense. It's a stream of spiritual energy that deeply transforms and transfigures everything and anyone with which and with whom it comes into contact. It's not simply a Buddhist movement in the narrow sense, or even a spiritual movement in the narrow sense. It's a stream of spiritual energy that deeply transforms and transfigures everything and anyone uh, with whom uh, it comes in contact. So, uh, Bhante, uh, as it were, enabled that stream of spiritual energy that originated with the Buddha's own enlightenment, he enabled it to ground, as it were, to find expression. Because it's always there as a potentiality, just like a great cloud which is full of uh, supercharged electricity. It's always got the potential to, to discharge as lightning. It's just waiting for the right circumstances to manifest. And those right circumstances, of course, are individual. The individual is able to channel that energy so that it manifests in a form that can enable many, many people to connect with, uh, well, with enlightenment ultimately, but certainly with this, uh, this charge that is at the centre of reality. So, uh, yes, Bante's... Uh, uh, formed this order, this movement, uh, which as a means for channeling that energy. And he's presented the Dhamma in a way that uh, he uh, found, expressed his own uh, understanding and which he believed would be uh, helpful to many of his disciples and because his early disciples responded so strongly to it. I wasn't the earliest disciple, but I was among those early disciples and just hearing Bhante's presentation just clarified a life for me. I knew where I was headed, what life was about. And it still does. Some of you are relatively new to the order and you've all responded to that. I see that in, a, in, in my limited experience at centres. Young people uh, responding to the... Uh, the Dhamma in Bhante's presentation, uh, just as we did in our early days. I see it in India too. People respond absolutely wholeheartedly. I've just been to Mexico earlier in the year and the extraordinary response that people have there. 
So Bante enabled this, uh, uh, this um, response to the Dharma through his particular presentation of it. Of course, that presentation isn't static. It's, uh, it's going to have to adapt and respond, evolve in relation to new circumstances. The world never stands still. And uh, the, the, the issues have arisen since the order that was founded that did not arise at his time. So there has to be a, uh, not, an, not an adaptation in the sense of a moulding, but a responding of that presentation to ever new circumstances and situations. In a sense, every time somebody gives a talk, they're uh, evolving the presentation. Bante didn't talk as I'm talking now, although you can easily find what I've said in what Bante says. But we each have to try to refresh and renew and communicate uh, that, uh, that presentation. But we have to keep referring back to the original presentation. Otherwise, what happens is each of us adapts it in our own way. And you get more and more adaptations which have less and less in common to, with each other. If that happens, what, what's going on with this stream of spiritual energy? Well, it's dividing into lots and lots of tiny little rivulets and streams, uh, many of which will, of course, just disappear into the soil, um, some of which will go in strange directions, some of which may prosper. But the force, the power of, uh, of, of the, the, the stream is lessened, is diminished. There has to be a, a, a uniting of the energies. Uh, otherwise, we cannot combat this, this, uh, these forces in the world. It's just each of us as individuals doing so. This is so much against the current of the times, isn't it? This way of thinking. Uh, you know, we privilege rights over duties. We privilege personal whim over service to something higher. That, that's the, the, the mood of our times. And it's all about my experience, not our shared experience. And, uh, well, OK, if that's what you want. But you will not be able to look evil in the face from that perspective. You need to feel you're part of something larger than yourself, I think. I have to keep remembering. It's just my thoughts. Um, you have to uh, uh, um, uh, uh, feel yourself to be part of something larger than yourself. Interestingly enough, uh, recent studies of what makes people happy uh, show that this is one of the predictors of happiness. If you feel you're serving others and serving a higher principle, some, some higher uh, ideal or virtue, you're more likely to be happy. Uh, and... Uh, well, it's true, isn't it? Don't you know it? Um, so we have to find ways of keeping referring back to Bante's own presentation, not just to his presentation, but what that presentation came from. Bante presented from his own experience of that suprapersonal force. And indeed, uh, that, that suprapersonal force, when manifested through a teacher, is adhisthana. If you see what I mean. Adhisthana is that suprapersonal force, that bodhicitta, when it's channeled by an individual teacher in relation to their disciples. If you're not overwhelmed with fear at that word. Um, uh, so, um, yes, uh, the... the um, uh, Bante's adhisthana, as it were, or the adhisthana that manifested through Bante, uh, formed this movement and is alive within it. We must keep going back to where that came from. It doesn't mean uncritically. Uh, indeed, Bante asks us to think about what he says. And if you think, then you must be free to differ. Although he also asks us, uh, not to, uh, he, he doesn't ask us not to differ from him, but he asks us to take him seriously, even if you differ from him. In other words, if you differ from him, think maybe 
he is saying something that I haven't understood. Maybe he's saying something more than I've understood, or maybe he's saying something really important, but the way he's saying it isn't quite speaking to me. One has to assume that there's something coming through it. I know that people have complex relationships with Bante. Some people have complex relationships with Bante. Some people have very simple relationships with Bante on both sides of the equation. Uh, but uh, whether, whether you like it or not, this movement is the manifestation of uh, that stream of spiritual energy that came through him. And it's formed in his understanding of what it means to go for refuge to the three jewels. That is, what it means to connect with that suprapersonal force. What it means to uh, commit yourself to it and to manifest it. So uh, we've got, I believe, my opinion, uh, I think it's quite a lot of other people's opinion too, we, we need to keep referring back to Bante and then seeing how what he has to say relates to our present circumstance and situation. If we don't do that, as I say, we will vociferate. The energies uh, will be uh, lost in, uh, uh, in many, many different directions, many, many different strands. We've already had that happening within the order. Fortunately, most of it's gone outside the order, but some of it still remains with us. These vociferative tendencies are always going to be there. But... Uh, Yes, if we want to keep the stream powerful and effective and keep it so that it can combat the terrible evils of the world, then we need to remain in connection with Bante, his teaching, and the mind from which that emerged, which, for all his failings, admitted failings, uh, confessed failings, for all that, was still in contact with something far greater and had a greater clarity about it than anybody else I've ever encountered. So we need to keep referring back. I'm sure that this is, um, you know, what most of us think we're doing. Um, by and large, that is what people do. But uh, it's generally, you know, when you give a talk or something like that, you go make a quick reference to the survey to find out what the five spiritual faculties are, or something like that. But I think we need to have much more serious engagement with Bante's words, because the words are the gateway to the mind, and the mind is the gateway to something more than the mind, if you like. So I think we need to keep on recurring to Bante and refreshing our connection, not just with the words, as I say, but with, with the mind that's behind the words. Because a book is, is really a kind of conversation, isn't it? Uh, you, you, know, you know this when you're, when you're reading especially a novel or something like that. You get inside the world of the novelist. Uh, but it's also true of philosophy or, and especially of Dharma, that you're not just connecting with sort of postulates, statements. You're connecting with the mind from which those come. Um, Yes, I remember Bante talking about reading the Samdhinirmochana Sutra, which is the, the um, foundational sutra for the Yogacara. And he said that uh, while he was reading it, he felt he was in contact with a mind, with a consciousness, with an awareness that was expressing itself through the sutra. He said he didn't know whose mind it was, whether it was the Buddha's or whatever, but he felt a definite presence behind the mind. So we need to read and listen in that spirit. It's easier when you're listening, isn't it? Because there's the, the voice, uh, and the voice is much more <laughs> redolent of the individual. But Bante puts so much into his writing. If you, if you look at Bante's writing from a, a, a purely literary point of view, it, it's extraordinarily precise, clear, uh, full of, of articulation, of uh, deeper understanding, by which I mean something more than intellect or emotion. There's uh, uh, something very deep in every page of what he writes. I remember this when uh, I had my crisis with Bante in the early 2000s. I went on solitary retreat and I decided I was going to uh, confront the issue absolutely directly. I was, I'd been trying to sort of move him aside, but somehow or other he wouldn't go. 
And so, uh, well, first of all, I did the prostration practice, and there he was, that man sitting right in front of me. Anyway, I came to terms with that, realising I wasn't going for refuge to him, but through him to the Buddha. But I read through all his memoirs from beginning to end, and uh, I enjoyed reading them so much, just as, you know, a, a literary experience. Uh, it's just so beautifully written, so evocative, um, and, um, um, yeah, a joy to read. They're enjoyable as literature. But I found something else was happening. I found I was just being lifted up. And uh, I, was in a, I was in a very, I was very depressed, I think, at that time. Obviously, I'd lost confidence in my teacher. Uh, and uh, reading this, I just felt completely lifted out of all that. I felt myself to be, uh, well, in contact with him. This very bright, very clear, uh, very warm uh, a mind. So we need to keep engaging with Bante's writing. I know some people find him not an easy read. Well, work harder. Um, yeah, work harder. Uh, if, it's, if English isn't your f first language, well, it's much more difficult, of course. But there are very good translations. Damaloka is here. There are very good translations in German, I believe. So I've been told. And in Mexico, they had something like 70 of Bante's works. I mean, it, uh, translated into really good Spanish. Some of them been translated two or three times till they get them good, as it were. No doubt they'll keep going. But uh, if you possibly can, read directly. But read it with the sense that you're trying to connect with the mind behind it. All reading is communication. But I think especially when you're uh, 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 reading your teacher's words, you're entering into a communication, which can be as much of, let's put it like this, an initiation as um, having water sprinkled on your head or whatever. Uh, 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 the, the, the Dhamma can be transmitted through the written word, as effectively as any other way. That's how I encountered it, actually. So uh, I think we need to keep on going back to Bante. Otherwise, when we go forward, we will just spread out. And of course, we'll lose the, 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 the extraordinary power and depth of insight that Bante brings. But we'll just vociperate. We'll just disappear into the sand. Um, <laughs> You know, you sometimes get streams coming down to a beach and they don't even reach the sea when the tide is out. They just sort of melt into the, into the sands. It'll be like that. All these little streams will just disappear. But if it's a powerful current, it will push the sand aside and get to the sea. So uh, we need to keep going back to Bante, reflecting on Bante, arguing with Bante if necessary, uh, if necessary, putting footnotes and codicils and, uh, uh, and, and so forth. Uh, commentaries, sub-commentaries, no doubt that tradition will go forward. We need to keep reaching back to Bante. If we don't, we do not have a future beyond three or four generations as a unified uh, uh, an order, which means as a unified stream of spiritual energy. I'm sure we will. Um, at least a, a, a majority will, or at least a, a certainly sizable uh, proportion will. But nonetheless, we need to go back, look at Bante, and refresh ourselves in the understanding from which our whole order and movement has come. This is especially tr important if you're teaching. Otherwise, what are you teaching? You're teaching your own ideas, which may be very good ideas, but they'll increasingly diverge from other people's. They need to be touched down. So I'm not, some people have, have been talk, talking about this sort of thing as conservative. Uh, and unfortunately, of course, conservative at the moment in Britain doesn't have a very good name. Um, but uh, even with a small c, uh, some people find it an un unpleasant term. But conservative, I think, in this con context simply means continuity. So there's a sense of continuity from a, a single source, which is... Uh, an abiding presence. This is what all traditions have done in the past. Tsongkhapa, uh, uh, the Gelugpas, all refer back to Tsongkhapa's work. 
uh, the Jodo Shinshu, they all go back to, to Shinran, uh, etc. Nyingma, it all goes back to Padmasambhava and his incarnations and his disciples' incarnations, what everyone makes of that. The point is that the, the, the founding figure is the point of reference. So, how do we do all this? How do we go about it? I personally think that we're not bad, but I don't think it's nearly deep enough or broad enough. I don't think enough people are going back to Bante. And this is one of the, the, the purposes behind Adishtana, the place that is. Of course, it's called Adishtana. Bante knew what he was doing when he called it Adishtana. And, of course, Adishtana isn't the only place where you connect with Bhante by any means, of course. There are many other places, many other situations where people do. But this is the preeminent one, um, the, the, the most important in Bhante's own understanding. Uh, he saw it as having the gold standard of his teaching. It should present the gold standard of his teaching. Well, I don't think it's been that so far, but we intend to make it so. Uh, and uh, we've been uh, forming a, 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 a something of a team of people who generally teach at Adishtana, who we know connect with this perspective. And uh, we've been having a number of meetings, there's 30 or 40 of them, people who regularly teach here or are connected in some way with what we do here. Could be many more, but we just had to start somewhere. So uh, we have a, a team of 30 or 40 men and women, uh, mostly senior order members who've actually studied with Bante, a few younger ones, just to remind us that life goes on, and uh, um, are quite a variety. Um, some very much faith followers, some more kind of critically minded, and so on. Uh, and uh, we've been sort of exploring what it means to keep on connecting with Bhante's teaching, what it means to touch base on it and then move forward from it, with it, as it were, in continuity from it. And uh, we've got to a stage where we're ready to launch, as it were, our project, which uh, is a project within the overall Adishtana framework. Uh, so all the usual things will go on, order weekends like this will go on, um, the various uh, Sangha retreats will go on, various meetings, uh, chairs and whatever it is, I don't know what they are, uh, will continue to take place here. But uh, we, we will have a range of events, of activities that come under the heading of the Sangha Extra Library and Study Centre. Bante's original idea, uh, way back in the early 2000s, was that we should uh, establish a a centre which would be where his library was, it's here, and where his approach would be studied, studied in depth and breadth. And uh, so uh, he, we, 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 uh, many of you may even remember, if you go back to the, the 2000s, we launched the project as the Sangharaksha Study and uh, Sangharaksha Library and Study Centre project. So uh, we, we've not sort of brought that to the fore until now because we're ready to start uh, going forward with what Bante originally wanted us to do. So, uh, as I say, all the, the usual things will go on. Um, all of them, of course, are related to Bante's expression of the teaching, but uh, much more indirectly and in different contexts. We'll do, be doing three main things, at least at the moment. It's all unfolding. But first of all, we'll be having retreats uh, and uh, events that are um, exploring Bante's presentation, but not necessarily with reference to his direct words. We weren't looking at text. We'll take a theme, like um, it, uh, recently there's been a study of the, uh, the six element practice. Well, you have got things that Bante said about that which can be looked at. There was the recent Nature of Mind uh, uh, retreat, which referred to a number of, um, of quotations from Bante. So we'll continue with that sort of thing. There may be rather larger retreats, and they will be online, probably. Uh, uh, well, they will be. 
uh, uh, some of them will be online. Probably many of them will be online. So that would be a sort of general level, mainly for order members, maybe for, for, for Mitras, especially those who've asked for ordination as well. So that's the first level of things that will be coming into the programme at Adishthana uh, before too long, I hope. Uh, we've already got some of those things, but we'll locate them under the heading of the Sangharachita Library and Study Centre. Then secondly, uh, we will be having really a continuation of the old seminars that Bante used to do. Uh, th those of us from those, those that era will remember with, um, well, great affection and uh, inspiration sitting in a room with Bante, that front room, Surita's room now. I hope he takes his shoes off before he goes in there. Um, we've recently found the desk that was there. Um, which I think should go back to Adishdana, uh, to Pamaloka, but that's another question. Um, but, uh, you know, sitting in a, in a circle with Bante in his room with a tartan carpet and the whole lot and um, going into a text, which meant listening with bated breath to Bante expounding absolutely brilliantly uh, what was in the text, often so opaque to a, 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 an uninformed reader uh, even a scholar often could only make scholarly statements about his history and philology. But Bante brought it to life, as somebody recently said, more like a literary critic than a, 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 um, a scholar. He's scholarly, uh, referring to scholarship, but he was bringing it to life, bringing the spiritual energy out of it. Do you remember? They were just stunning events. And uh, uh, he would do six or seven a year, maybe more. And uh, every time there was a seminar, if you weren't on it, you waited for people to come back. If you possibly could, you got hold of the recordings and you went through it all. And Bhante would send these sort of shock waves of spiritual energy through the movement, through these seminars. Well, I can't promise that we'll be at that level, <laughs> but uh, we will take uh, some of the same topics that Bhante entered uh, and look at Bante's words about it and uh, bring it all to life again. I've just done a little seminar of this kind with uh, my two friends from Baja Retreat Centre. We looked at that very paper on uh, uh, um, uh, Manu Buddha Guru Tarton, which is uh, the one I referred to earlier is so important. And we got so much from it. The, and more than anything, the, the energy that came from it so we'll be trying to approach things in that way. Smallish groups, uh, it depends on the, the leader, but perhaps not more than eight, so that we can really engage with each other very deeply. Also, it, it's an opportunity, we found this already, where, that, that, where people have some difficulties in relation to Bante, because he's a complex man, he's a human being, and, you know, as I said, confessed his own failings. And uh, for many of us, that's, that puts us in a difficult position in relation to him. Well, you just need to talk that out. Uh, that's my experience with people. That it, you just need to be able to talk it out and sort out the, the spiritual sheep from the spiritual goats. No, that metaphor doesn't work. But sort out the dross from the pure gold. Uh, you don't need to be sort of saying everything about him was wonderful. You don't need to be saying that. He wouldn't have said it. But you do need to, to if, if you're part of all this, to be connecting with the, the, that spiritual stream that came through him. So it's an opportunity we found for people to raise their doubts, raise their questions, raise their conundrum, and for these to be sorted through. Uh, and uh, especially because most of the leaders will have had quite a bit of contact with Bante. Uh, and some of them will have attended those, uh, those seminars and uh, so you'll be able to well, work things out if you need to. You may not need to, in which case don't bother. Um, but if you do, if it's, if it's a live issue for you, there's a situation in which you can work that out. But most of all, where you can connect with the, uh, the, the, the uh, Bante's particular presentation through that text, which relates you then to Bante's mind, which relates you to the stream of spiritual energy that manifested through him. So those seminars, I think, will be uh, very important for the, for the future of the order. And I hope that you will all 
uh, start to engage with them. We hope to have some sort of structure for it. That's still under debate. Perhaps in the next few months we'll be clarifying that, I hope. It seems to take a long time to clarify things. But I hope that we'll clarify that and we'll have some sort of structure so that you can kind of feel you're going through all the different aspects of Bante's work, that it adds up to something. So you start with that, then go on to that, if you want to. If you want to, you can do something else under that heading. But there will be headings so that it amounts to something and that you've in the end got a, a full belly, as it were, full of Bante's broad presentation. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you will find that this gives you much greater ability to apply the Dhamma in practice, apply it in your own talks uh, and your own teaching and apply it in your interaction with other people because you'll have touched something very deep. I'm still trading on the times that I spent with Bante, especially in seminar and sometimes in, in a particular kind of personal communication. I'm still trading on that. I just read Nagabodi's uh, wonderful um, biography of Bante, which will be coming out in Windhorse quite soon. In fact, I read it twice. And um, it, I, it, it, it brings out that, that extraordinary quality of Bante's. And uh, you can see, I can see the effect that Bante's had on Nagabodi in that book. So, yes, uh, please do come. Please do take advantage. Maybe it'll take a little while to get going. Maybe they'll be a bit clunky to begin with. But if we can get something going, it will go on for generations. It will refresh our movement down the ages. We've got to start doing it. bante has been dead four years, and we've still been doing it in a very, well, kind of effective but uh, limited way, uh, and some more than others, of course. But really, all order members ought to be engaging in this way, whether at Adjistana or not, with Bante's presentation, in order for that stream of spiritual energy to be refreshed and renewed. Bante, in going into a text, would take the, the, the spiritual energy coming from the original authors or compilers, arguably from the Buddha himself, and he would refresh it and make it applicable now. And that's what uh, we, we can do uh, and need to continue doing, but continuing to refer back to Bante. Otherwise, we just divide. So that's the second element, these seminars, which will be small groups, order members, dealing with Bante's own writings. Uh, to some extent, also dealing with texts that Bante dealt with, but in the light of his dealing, if you see what I mean. Then thirdly, we're going to uh, commence, we haven't got many of the details yet, what we're provisionally calling the Acharya course, which will be, again, provisionally, a two-year uh, advanced study of Bante, uh, which will be partly residential at Adjistana, partly online, and partly personal uh, um, projects and, and study and so forth. So we hope to start a pilot project um, uh, next year. Uh, this, again, is all being discussed. Um, and uh, we hope that in this way there will be quite a number of order members who've engaged together very deeply with Bante's presentation. And they know it from A to Z. I mean, it's amazing being with both Kalyana Prabha and Vidya Devi. They know Bante backwards. You know, they can immediately point to something. Pamavadra is pretty good, but they are on another level, I'm sure he will admit. <laughs> they are amazing. You know, that, oh, well, Bante in etc., etc., immediately. We should all be like that, or at least a fair number of us should be like that, are not, able, not only able to reference, but to make intelligible the reference. So this course, we hope, will, uh, uh, will support those who want to do that. Uh, it'll be a, it's quite small numbers, probably, to begin with. So it'll be a bit do-it-yourself, working together uh, to, to build that up. But I'd hope that in every area of the movement, there would be a significant number of people who'd been through that sort of course. We may add extra stages to it, you know, about teaching and, and so forth. And I think there needs to be some exploration of, of institutions 
uh, principles of institutions. I don't think that's sufficiently explored. I'm constantly surprised. People don't know basic principles. Like again and again, you see people starting a, a centre or something like that with a, with a majority of non-order members on it. Very basic principles that don't seem to get transmitted um, and, and so on. So we need to do some training in that. But at the moment, we're just going to focus on Bante's own words. And hopefully, so that you get to read the whole lot and get to examine in depth quite significant parts of it. Probably done chronologically, that's the idea at the present. Uh, we started off by thinking of it on an analogy with an MA course. I think probably PhD might be better, but um, it will be not an, not an MA in so far as it won't be an academic study. It'll be a living spiritual exploration, but uh, it will go uh, uh, pretty deep. That's at least what we hope. So these are the three aspects of the Sangharakshita uh, Library and Study Centre that will be happening here at Adishtana. Perhaps based in the library, that may be the sort of um, the home for it. But uh, we hope that uh, all, all of you will engage with this. And we invite you during this weekend, if you're interested in knowing more or contributing in some way or making suggestions, then please see uh, a, a member of the uh, Adistana teaching community. Can we have a few hands up just to see who's there? Again, it's pretty random. Look at them. Aren't they random? Um, but... Yes, uh, if you can see some of those sort of people or just ask anybody if they know, we can gather some ideas from you. Because we're trying to do something quite new. Uh, it's not completely new, but we're doing it in a more systematic and, and overt way than we've ever done before. So we hope that you will engage in helping us to create this. And eventually we want to export it. Uh, we've begun a little bit of experiment in India and uh, I shall be exploring it in Mexico, and hopefully we'll do it in other areas of the movement where there are people who share this perspective. Not every order member does, but those who do uh, 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 can take it forward. So I think this is uh, uh, very, very important for our future, what we're trying to do here at Adishtana. We're trying to create a, a, a situation in which uh, we can go in depth into Bante's presentation so that we can connect with the mind of the man and so that we can connect with the, the, the adhisthana that flows through him, the suprapersonal force that flows through him and refresh our movement, but also address mindfully changing circumstances. We do address them, but we address them very randomly. Somebody gets an inspiration, reads a book, goes on a retreat, and they just start teaching. Apparently at Gaia House, they no longer accept order members on their retreats because they say order members come, do a retreat and then go away and teach. And uh, they don't think that's good. Mm. <laughs> that's rather sobering, isn't it? We're not good. And I agree with them. Um, we ought to uh, digest much more fully and have more consensual approach to to adaptation and evolution. It's not that there's no evolution. Continuity does not mean stasis. Uh, it's continuity is dynamic, but it always refers back to the source and it keeps on refreshing itself with the source as the whole Buddhist tradition does with the Buddha himself. So that's what we'll be doing at Adishtana. And... Uh, <coughs> I, I think this, this will really benefit the, the whole order, especially, and thereby the movement in the future, in the ways that I've already talked about. But I wanted to finish with saying a few words about Adistana as a place. Uh, and, and not just Adistana, but a number of our uh, places that we've built up over the, over the years. There's, uh, well, I was thinking of Arioloka in, in, in the United States. Um, been there a long, long time. It's got deep roots. Uh, we've got uh, Padmaloka. Uh, Bante lived at Padmaloka. Bante visited Arioloka more than uh, several times. And so on. LBC. Bante lived at the LBC. These are very, very important for us. Uh, and, and they're important because of the nature of the times. Uh, we live 
perhaps in the most rootless time in human history, certainly in countries like Britain, where most people no longer live where their ancestors lived, where people have very little connection with the, the soil on which they tread. They, you know, what, 90% of the population is urban, and it's very difficult to have that sort of connection, although the traditional Cockney did. Um, but uh, yes, we, we've lost contact with a sense of rootedness in the soil around us, in the culture around us, and it's happening faster and faster and faster. And this is part of the debate about immigration. Uh, I don't like the way it's conducted, but there is an issue in connection with that sense of rootedness. Um, so I think it's very important for us as a movement that we root in certain places, that we have places which go way back in our history where we go, where we go on pilgrimage. As I say, I think that um, you ought to take your shoes off when you go into Surita's room and bow to the desk where he wrote so many of his works. You ought to go into the, the, the men's office at the LBC and bow where Michael works uh, because that's where Bante composed, for instance, the Sutra of Golden Light series, the Vimalakirti Nidesha series, wrote so much there. We ought to have these places as hallowed ground and we must never, never let them go. They are so important. Rootedness in place is part of what we can offer to stabilise this extraordinarily fluid, um, uh, unstable world around us. It's important for our movement that we honour these places, we use them. Adistana is particularly important because Bhante spent the last five years of his life here and is buried here, and we've uh, deliberately commemorated uh, the place where he lived those last five years, and we've preserved his library. So we've got those places which you can visit and which give you a sense of sort of grounding. Now, not everybody can relate to this because we're so rootless. We're so up here, if you see what I mean. Uh, we're not down there. Our feet are not on the ground. And uh, it's really important that the movement has its feet on the ground in, the, in, the, in terms of these particular places, which are so important to us. Tara Loka is another very important one. Tiratana Loka is too, but uh, it's a little later in the process. I think Bante did go there. He certainly went to Tara Loka. But one can think of these places at, in, in India, of course, uh, the Mahavihara, uh, Nagaloka, and so on. Baja, Bor, Bante went there and uh, spent there. There's, there's a room at... Uh, at uh, uh, Baja that's still referred to as Bante's room, uh, even though Bante hadn't been there for ages. Um, so this is really important for strengthening our sense of continuity. And uh, I, I, I touch on this last because I think it's part of what we need to be thinking about, keeping on refreshing our roots, our actual physical roots, and our emotional roots in devotion, and our intellectual, if you like, but it's not just intellectual, our dharmic roots in Bhante's particular teaching. So I, I hope that uh, I've uh, made clear what we will be doing, these three aspects of the Sangharachita Library and Study Centre, the, uh, the general uh, retreats uh, and events that we'll be um, exploring aspects of Bhante's presentation of, of, of uh, the Dhamma that are not necessarily directly referring to what he said, or only incidentally. And then secondly, seminars along the old lines where we get together and really go into Bhante's presentation critically and uh, in, a, in a, a dynamic way, trying to refer it back to our own experience and trying to sense the man behind it and deal with our own interaction with him. And then finally, this uh, provisionally Acharya course, which will be a much more intensive study. So please do uh, uh, engage with all of this if you can, if you feel like it. And if you're interested in, in contributing or exploring further or simply expressing interest, please see somebody from the uh, Adhisthana team or a member of the Adhisthana teaching community. So thank you very much. Thank you.